My name is Max Feinstein, and I'm an anesthesiologist recording at the Mount Sinai Hospital in New York City. An important practical and philosophical question that comes up in anesthesiology is whether patients experience pain even if they are subjectively unaware of anything that's going on under general anesthesia. In this video, I got my hands on a brand new device that is designed to measure a patient's objective experience of pain under general anesthesia. If you find this video interesting or helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you liked it and subscribe to the channel. Let's dive in. This video is not medical advice, and it's really important to point out that this video was not sponsored by anyone. So the device manufacturer was not involved with the creation or approval of the video you're watching. General anesthesia means that a patient is rendered unconscious and not responsive to painful stimulus. So what that means is they are not subjectively experiencing anything that is painful. Having said that, it is still possible that a patient's body may react to something painful that happens to them. For example, a scalpel going through skin during surgery. Some of the typical types of responses include increased heart rate and increased blood pressure. For many patients, that's really not a problem if there is a slight increase in heart rate or blood pressure, but for someone who has, for example, a sick heart, this can actually be very problematic and, in the worst case, could precipitate an intraoperative cardiac arrest. For these reasons, it's critical that anesthesiologists treat intraoperative pain even if a patient is not aware of that pain because they're under general anesthesia. I actually made a video describing the ways in which anesthesiologists administer opioids as a routine part of surgery, and I put a link to it right here if you'd like to check it out. On the flip side, over-treating pain during surgery can result in adverse consequences as well. For example, a patient who receives too much opioid could have post-operative nausea and vomiting, or they may experience more severe adverse effects like respiratory depression that actually could be life-threatening. Overall, the anesthesiologist's goal is to make sure that pain is well controlled, which often entails using medication. Not too much, not too little, but just the right amount. The term nociception literally means perception of a noxious or painful stimulus. And this device made by Medisense is called the PMD200 and is designed to measure nociception. You might be wondering, how exactly does the device work? Well, it actually measures a number of different parameters on a patient's finger, as I'll show you right now. It starts with this finger sensor, which is disposable. Then this disposable sticker connects to a reusable device in which I place my finger. So as you can see, it's a pretty non-invasive device that comfortably sits on one of my fingers. Now we'll turn the device on and see exactly how it works. Now with the device powered on, you can actually see the signals that it measures. So that includes plethmography, which is changes in circulation, conductance, which is the amount of electrical conduction of a patient's skin, skin temperature, and the bottom line here is for movement. Now we'll go ahead and follow the simple instructions on the screen to verify signal quality before pressing start. All of these signals look fine to me. I've got the device on my finger and I'll press start. So the device is now calibrating and coming up with a number that will be displayed here momentarily. And voila, the device came up with the number 20, but it's changing. And what exactly does this number mean? Well, this device was designed to take a number of different inputs, including what we went over in this signal section here, and combine it into an algorithm that comes up with a scale from 0 to 100 that is from no nociception, or 0, to extreme nociception, which is 100. And the device manufacturer, through empirical studies, has determined that a number of 25 corresponds with the threshold between no nociception and nociception. In other words, anesthesiologists should aim to have their patients with a nociception level or null index of less than 25. So according to this device, my nociception right now isn't zero. It's a little elevated, but not quite at the threshold of nociception. That probably corresponds with the slight amount of tachycardia that I get that comes along with recording YouTube videos. 
One of the interesting things to consider with this device is that for patients who are awake, then emotional stimuli can actually affect the null index. Whereas for patients who are anesthetized under general anesthesia, there's obviously no subjective emotional component that is factored into this number, but rather a patient's experience of pain. So if I take a second and stop thinking about making this video and rather just do a relaxing meditation, let's see if it changes the number at all. Interesting. So clearly one of the limitations or potential benefits of this device is that for patients who are awake, emotional factors can play into the readout that the device gives. A couple of other important limitations that come to mind include the fact that a patient does need to have good perfusion to their finger and their finger also has to be immobile for the device to get a reading. I've actually also had an opportunity to use this device in the operating room, but at this point I've only used it with about 10 patients. So I don't have enough data at this point to say definitively whether it is going to change my practice or not, but I will say it does seem to be pretty effective at detecting when there is a noxious stimulus that the patient is experiencing under general anesthesia. So what do scientific studies say about how well this device actually works in clinical practice? One study looked at whether using the null index during surgery as a guide for how much opioid to give resulted in better post-operative pain scores. What the authors found is that an hour and a half after surgery had completed, patients who had this device used to titrate in opioid medication had a 3 out of 10 median pain score compared to other patients who didn't have this device used who had a median pain score of 5 out of 10. What the authors suggest is that giving opioids at the right time during surgery, as detected by this device, is what contributed to improved post-operative pain scores. Another study looked at whether or not use of this device resulted in overall less administration of opioids during surgery. The authors found that the infusion rates for opioids were about 50% higher in the group that did not have this device used as a guide for administering opioids. The authors suggest that use of this device allows anesthesiologists to avoid overdosing patients on opioids and only administering what is necessary for surgery. I should point out that these studies did involve authors who received money from the company that makes this device. However, that definitely doesn't invalidate these studies, and in fact, it's pretty common for device manufacturers to support some of the early studies that investigate whether the device works. But there are definitely more studies needed to investigate whether this results in meaningful differences in clinical outcomes. And I'm happy to say that Mount Sinai Hospital is the very first center in the United States that is conducting one such study. Once that study has been completed and published, I'll put a link in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, you might want to check out this video where I talk about the monitors that anesthesiologists routinely use for patients undergoing surgery. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time.